Hello there, everybody in YouTube land and welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be talking about a ton of different types of migration. We're going to be going into migration, chain migration, voluntary migration, forced migration, transnational migration, transhumans migration, interregional migration, intra-regional migration, guest workers, and of course step migration. Whew, that is a lot of different things happening all at once. So let's stop wasting time with this corny over the top, well, maybe not that over the top intro and get into the actual video. So if you couldn't tell already, there's a lot of information in this video, so make sure you're taking notes. You can use my notes down below or consider using your own. Also, if you like the video and you find value, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Now we're talking about migration, so it's going to be important for us to understand just what migration is. Migration is a form of relocation diffusion. This is when someone is permanently moving from one area to another, and it can take form in a variety of ways. Sometimes it's within a region, sometimes it's within a city, sometimes it's just across the street. Other times it's between borders of countries. Now we're gonna be getting into a bunch of different types of migration and talking a little bit about each of them. Our first two migration types that we're gonna talk about is voluntary and forced migration. Now these aren't too complicated. The name itself kind of gives it away. Voluntary migration is when someone decides that they want to move somewhere and they are also deciding where they want to move to. They are the ones making the decisions in their choices here. They have options. They get to decide that they want to move and that they want to go to place B or C. They are the ones who are doing everything. Forced migration, on the other hand, is when that decision is made for them, whether it be because of government, the environment, whether it be due to a war, whether it be due to crime or other issues, they are no longer able to stay in that area. They're being pushed out. They are forced out of an area or they're forced to a location. Both of those would be forced migration. So that's important to understand just for the difference between the two. Voluntary, you are making all the decisions. Forced, it is being made for you. Maybe your environment no longer supports society there and so you have to leave or you would die. Or the government is actually physically moving people. That could also be something that could occur there. There's a bunch of different examples for both of these. We're not going to get into all of them right now, but if you do have questions of them, make sure to post it in the comments below. The next migration we're going to talk about is step migration. And for this one, I want you to think about you actually just walking up a staircase, walking up steps. You, when you walk up a staircase, are trying to get to the top. Or if you're walking down, you're trying to get to the bottom. You have an end destination. And to get there, you have to travel through another destination. So this is important to understand. Step migration is when people have an end goal in mind. However, there's different areas that are going to be in between it. And they might stay at those for an extended period of time. So if I am trying to migrate, let's say, from Florida to Minnesota, I don't know why, maybe you don't want the warm weather anymore and you have heard all these great things about the Minnesota winters. So you decide to start moving up and on your way, you decide to stop and stay with some family. Maybe you stay in Iowa and you decide to stay there for a couple of months as you decide to spend time with your family that you haven't seen. That would be part of step migration. Iowa was part of the step to get to Minnesota. Eventually you make it, but there's areas in between. Some you might stay for a longer period of time, some less. Step migration is just looking at the travel process. It's talking about how sometimes people move from point A to point E. And then the step part is everything in between. And so that's important to understand. There is some cases too where some people through this step migration might end and they might actually stay in one of the areas and never make it to that final destination. A lot of times too, this happens when we look even at Central America and people coming to the United States. Step migration occurs as they move from city to city. Some decide to stay in certain cities or they're blocked by different obstacles and that might force them to never make it to the end there. So I just talked about Central America and the United States and this is a great time to talk about transnational migration. This is when someone crosses an international border to come to a new country. Now, at the same time, though, they're not going to lose that connection they have to their old country. They'll still be talking to people back home. They might even be doing readmittance where they actually send money that they make in the new country back home and maybe try to get someone else to come to their new country that they just got to. In this case, the United States. So transnational migration is when you cross an international border and you might have some stops on the way. That could be, that might be part of step migration. But here, the important thing is you're crossing a border and you're 
you're going to continue your connections back home. And maybe you start to adapt that new culture, maybe you don't. That's where we get into acculturation and assimilation. And if you need more information on any of that, make sure to click the video on the top right. You can check that one out. I talk about all those different concepts there. Now, since we're already talking about remittance, where people make money in a society and they send it back home to their original country, we should talk about chain migration. Now, chain migration has been in the news a lot. There's been a lot of people talking about removing chain migration and how it's evil and how it's the enemy. At the same time, though, what is it? What are we actually talking about here? Now, chain migration is part of the family reunification process. Essentially, what it is, is if you have a family member that has moved to a new country. If we're talking about the United States, let's say someone came from Mexico and they now live in the United States. Let's say they have a brother back home in Mexico and they want to try and get the brother to come to the United States. Well, that's chain migration. They could apply essentially to co-sponsor that person and get them then a green card possibly, or get them access into the country and possibly even apply for citizenship. A lot of our immigration policy has been based around family reunification, where this chain migration process happens. I apply to get my brother to come over, he applies then to get his wife to come over, and this is that chain migration process. Now, the average time for this is five years. So the idea that one person comes in and all of a sudden you're going to have a flood of new immigrants coming into the country isn't necessarily true. The average wait time is five years and it could be denied if there's different things or red flags that come up that would prevent you from getting it. So it's not like it's a guarantee to get into the country. Another type of migrant is a guest worker. This is someone who's coming over to a country on a temporary work visa, essentially. They're here to work for a period of time and they're granted a temporary stay in until there is a cycle and new people are brought in or it expires and they have to go home. Guest workers are there to be able to help areas in the economy that need more workers. They sometimes provide special skills or they provide a workforce that maybe is lacking in that country. An example here is I used to work at the Mall of America and in the summer when we became really busy we needed more workers to be able to make the theme park run. We didn't have enough people. And so we actually got a j turn program where we had students that came from all over the world to come and work for the summer. When we were busier and we need more workers, well, they would come and they would be provided housing and they would work for the mall. And they would be ride operators and provide different roles within the mall to help it function. And that was because when it was busy, we just didn't have enough people living in our area to be able to support the business. So we found workers outside. When that time was up though, those workers went back. They were temporary migrants. They came in, they were guest workers in the country. When they were done, then they went home. The next type of migration is a little bit different than all the ones we've been talking about. It's more specialized and it's predominantly found in pastoral nomads. If you don't know what pastoral nomads are, check out some of my videos on agriculture. You can click the link on the top right to be able to see more of that. But here we have a migration that is occurring due to seasons. Now, again, this is more pastoral nomads. So typically what we see is areas where we're seeing a seasonal change, for example, winter to summer, and people are then going to migrate not just themselves, but also their animals. So for pastoral nomads, they are going to move more to the lowlands in the winter months and then the highlands in the summer. So this is just a form of migration where people and animals are moving together and it is connected to the seasons and is more of a nomadic lifestyle. Our last two types of migration that we're going to talk about is interregional and intra-regional. Now, if you can't tell, they're very similar, but they're very important to keep different. You have to know the differences between these. So make sure you find a way to memorize this. Interregional is when people are migrating within a country, so they're not leaving the country, but they're going to a different region. They are moving out of one region of the country and moving into a different region of a country. While intra-regional is when you are migrating within a region. You're not leaving that region, you're also staying in the same country. Intra-regional a lot of times is when we have counter-urbanization, when people are moving from the cities to maybe a rural life, or vice versa, when we have urbanization, when you're not moving that far away where again, interregional is when you're moving into a different region. So make sure you can tell the difference between those two because they have different connotations and different aspects affect different parts of our topics. 
because they have different connotations and also will impact different content. So it's important to tell the two apart because these terms are going to come up a lot throughout the course. And that's it. That's a bunch of different vocab that just got thrown at you all on migration. Hopefully this video helped you better understand the different types of migration and kind of what's going on with them. If you found value in the video, please consider subscribing and liking the video and check out some of the other videos on the channel. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you for stopping by and watching. And until next time, I'll see you online.